Hello everyone, this is Chuck Carnivale, co-founder of FastGraphs. On behalf of the entire FastGraphs team, it is my pleasure to present this short video highlighting some of the important enhancements that come with our recent upgrade to FastGraphs. As we mentioned in our written announcement, many of the benefits of the upgrade will be transparent at first. However, we have included some enhancements upon the initial launch of this new and improved version of FastGraphs. For starters, and at the request of several subscribers, we have made the ability to take a FastGraph apart and put it back together more efficient. You will notice this by the expanded orange rectangle here at the bottom of the graph. We now have the ability to take the graph apart one item at a time. For example, I can click price off, normal PE, the dividend payout ratio, and dividends, leaving only the earnings and the earnings valuation reference line. The reason this is important is we believe it helps understand what FastGraphs is expressing more effectively than we were able to with our previous version. One of the important aspects that people often misunderstand is the fact that we express dividends in two ways. We have the dividend payout ratio, which is reflected by this white looking, it's actually honeydew green line. This gives you a graphic picture of the company's payout ratio or the dividend payout ratio without having to look at numbers or try to see it in a statistical format. This area below the white line illustrates the amount of these total dividends that are actually paid out to shareholders by the company. Then we also express dividends after they've been paid out by this light green shaded area up here. And the reason we do it this way is to illustrate that in the long run, earnings drive the stock price as seen when I add the stock price overlay here. And this creates the capital appreciation component of total return. But the second component of total return is dividend income, and that's now reflected by showing the light green area reflecting these dividends or these earnings that have been paid out as dividends. An additional important upgrade in our historical graphs is the way we calculate performance. Under our legacy fast graphs, we based it on buying one share of stock. So, for example, you could point to a spot on the graph and click it, and it would come up as one share. We've now created a version where a performance calculation version where we assume an initial ten thousand dollar investment then we simply calculate the price closing price on that day which calculates the number of shares purchased and the pe ratio that the stock was trading at at the time you made the purchase then you could go to any forward spot in time and click it again and this will create a full performance report. And I do want you to notice these things can be moved around. These pop-ups can be moved around for your convenience, allowing you to see the period of time you're calculating. But in the past, we did it, as I mentioned earlier, on one share. Now we assume a $10,000 investment. So for this time frame I'm illustrating here, had you invested $10,000 in United Technologies on February 28th, 2003, as of December 31st, 2013, it would have been worth $38,852.48. That represents a growth percentage of 288.5%. You would have also received $5,093 worth of dividends on your 341 plus shares. Your combination of growth plus dividend income would now equal $43,945, increasing your return to 339.5%, or a total annualized rate of return of 14.6%. We believe this performance calculation upgrade provides subscribers a better perspective of how and what kind of rates of return a company actually generates for you on the standardized $10,000 investment format. We've also simplified our performance results table with clearer language. The cumulative dividend incomes section is now simply called dividend, showing you the total amount of dividends you've received over the time frame being graphed in the above graph. And this includes, of course, the whole time frame. 
we now simply call the capital appreciation component growth. And then we give you a percentage return or annualized rate of return without dividends, still indicating growth. And now we have a section called growth and income, which combines both the total capital appreciation plus dividend income. And then we give you a total annualized rate of return as a percentage. Um, we think this is a clearer articulation of the performance results than we previously had. We hope you all agree. These enhancements are available to all subscribers, premium and basic. However, for premium subscribers, we also expanded the functionality of our PE versus interest rates graph. It is now a lot more robust and, and easier to utilize and I think provides a clearer perspective. The left scale shows interest rates on a 10-year treasury note. And you can now point and run your mouse anywhere along this graph and it'll tell you what the 10-year treasury note was paying on any given date. So that has a lot more functionality than, we, than the previous version had. The price earnings ratio of the respective company that you're graphing for each time frame is also listed here. And this gives you a reflection of whether price earnings ratios are expanding or contracting relative to interest rates. Conventional wisdom, the idea is that as interest rates are dropping, PE ratios should be expanding. Therefore, one of the key features of this particular graph is it illustrates that there are other factors at play than just a pure relationship between PE ratios and interest rates. In this example, valuation was relatively high back in 1998 and 99, 2000, et cetera, which obviously was a terrific headwind and PE ratios really were, had almost nowhere to go but down. So this idea that there's a direct relationship between interest rates and PE ratios is not necessarily a given and is more reflected in this graph. Our second graph is the price to sales graph or sales and price to sales graph as we call it. And now you can utilize this graph and the left scale is the price to sales. And so you can just simply run your mouse and see what price to sales the company has been trading at historically. And then, of course, the, the red portion shows sales, and it gives you a report on what the company's sales were for these historical years. This represents another valuation measurement that you can utilize to help you make better decisions on whether or not now is an attractive time to buy, sell, or hold a given stock. Another addition or improvement to fast graphs that I'm personally most excited about is the launching of our subscriber center. Initially, we plan to put three items under the subscriber center, a forum where subscribers will be able to communicate directly with team fast graphs or talk amongst themselves, sharing any questions they might have had or answered or any um, tips or tricks on how they use fast graphs better. Of course, we will also put announcements here for any forthcoming improvements, enhancements or changes with fast graphs. And we will also create a frequently asked question section. We get a lot of questions over and over again from subscribers. We will be putting them here under this part of the subscriber center in both written and video format so that we can keep all subscribers better informed about how to use fast graphs more effectively and what many of the features and components that fast graphs offers. The most important benefit, however, this upgrade really contains is the more efficient method of downloading data from S&P Capital IQ. In the past, it could take us three to four days before a complete download would pick up, for example, a finalized earnings announcement or, or for that matter, any changes in analyst estimates. They might not show up for two or three days. This new data downloading process will allow us to reflect that information almost as quickly as it happens in the going forward. And perhaps more importantly, this process will give us the facilitate or facilitate us adding future enhancements to fast graphs much more effectively and efficiently than we have before. We're dedicated to continuously building you a better fast graphs and this new data downloading process will help us do that. We hope you found these enhancements beneficial.